Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. Our next presenters are ready to take the stage. So please welcome Sid and Priyanka from GitLab. All right. So reinvent your pipeline with GitLab, Kubernetes, and Amazon EKS. Hi, I'm Sid. I'm the CEO at GitLab. And I'm Priyanka, Director of Cloud Native Alliances at GitLab. So at GitLab, we believe that everyone can contribute. And it's our mission to make this possible. It's what drives our product vision and how we run our company. Over 100,000 organizations are using GitLab across the entire DevOps lifecycle. And GitLab is the first application that where you can do planning, software development, security, and operations in a single application. Being a single application is one of the biggest reasons folks resonate with our message at GitLab. So why is that, you may ask? I mean, that's why we're here today. So our industry has been moving towards the DevOps best practices because everybody wants to ship faster and reliably. However, as I'm sure you all are aware, in the past few years, our ecosystem is experiencing this huge tool chain crisis, which is caused by the explosion of the number of tooling that's available. There's lots of small teams choosing their own tooling, and thereby, all these various things are fragmented across companies. This causes a lack of visibility across organizations, and there's inefficiency when people want to collaborate, and finally, scattered governance. It precludes organizations from getting the best advantages out of the DevOps philosophy. So if you run a company today, your DevOps tool chain has probably all kinds of different applications. In every state, most of the time, there's multiple ones. And there's a lot of integrations needed. If you, even if you have just nine, you need about 24 app integrations between them. So at a company of 500 people, there tends to be between 20 and 60 people that are, are working to integrate all of that. That is undifferentiated heavy lifting. It has to happen in every company in our space. And it's unnecessary because we could also work together. 100,000 companies working together to make it a single thing. The worst thing about it is not the integration work, but the fact that different teams are in different tools. You have to hand over the baton to another team. The developers cannot look at the monitoring data. The security team has to wait until something is totally ready before they can do their security assessment. That leads to wasted time. If you're on the same page, if you're in the same application, if you can, don't have to wait before you can start, you can get a 200% faster DevOps lifecycle. And you can gain back that lost time. And that wasn't intuitive to us. We had a person contribute a better GitLab runner. GitLab runner is what runs your GitLab, the tests in GitLab CI. And Camille from Poland said, I have something better. We adopted it. We hired him. And he joined and he said, GitLab CI and GitLab has to become one application. And he said that to Dimitri, my co-founder. And Dimitri said, you're wrong. Why, why would we do that? The applications are integrated perfectly together. They only work with each other. How can there be something better? And he pushed on and he reached me. And I said, you're obviously wrong. We need to combine many sharp tools together. That is the Unix philosophy. And then he convinced me by one of our values, efficiency. It would be easier for us to ship one application. But that's not the biggest effect this had. The biggest effect was that people were super happy. Our end users, for them, having CI integrated with their version control was such a better user experience. And we've seen that confirmed by the market. After us, Atlassian Bitbucket added CI. And recently, GitHub added Actions, which can also do CI. So the rest of the market is seeing it. And you ask any GitLab user you meet, and they'll confirm that it's better to have it in a single application. So we're now doubling down on this strategy. And we're going to make GitLab the single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle, all the way to monitoring and security. At the same time, being this single application does not preclude 
GitLab from playing nice with other popular tools in the space. So we have great integrations with Jira, Jenkins, GitHub, and of course, the cloud providers such as AWS and Amazon EKS to give you a one-stop shop instant software factory. Our customers will tell you that GitLab is the best way to get your organization to practice the DevOps philosophy at scale. The key word here being at scale. And you'll see more why it shortly. So as Sid said, GitLab is the single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle. And that starts at the manage stage, plan stage, all the way to monitoring. So manage and planning is like, you know, around features such as issue boards, issue tracking, burn down charts, all that helps you. But I'm not going to go into the details of that today. Today I'm going to do a demo that we'll start with the create stage, which starts with version control, and then we'll make changes to our code, push it, go through the CI CD pipeline, which will do a bunch of security tests and performance checks, finally build review apps, and then push to production and see production metrics. So this way, you'll get to see what all these customers are talking about, and we're not just saying things. Uh, by the way, it's just 20 minutes, and it's a live demo, so please be kind to me. Let's switch to demo, please. All right, so everybody can see my screen. So here, as I said, we, I had the code already in GitLab, which is what we used to build and ship code. So this is a project. This is my repository. Before we deep dive into the code and start making changes, I'm going to show you a couple of quick configuration points that are going to make our life much easier as we go along. So I'm going to go into operations and Kubernetes to check that my clusters are set up. So this is our clusters page, where right now I have one cluster already, but you can actually set up multiple, which can be quite nice. I'm going to go into the Kubernetes cluster to check configuration. Um, there are many application utilities that I have already installed, such as Helm Tiller. And this one's really cool. I have Prometheus already set up here, which means I will get metrics out of the box when the application is running. Um, here you can see the cluster details. So let's check the creds. Amazon e AWS shows up for everybody. So we're all set here. Looking good. Awesome, awesome. Let us now do one more thing. I'm going to go to settings and set up our CI CD pipeline. So as we said, we're a single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle. What that means, and one of the things that we offer is an auto DevOps pipeline, which is a set of best practices pipeline that we offer so that developers can just commit the code and GitLab will do the rest all the way from testing, security checks, uh, review apps, monitoring, and then push to production and then metrics. So I'm going to configure this. Here I check the option to set up the pipeline. Know that this is an option. You can use your own pipeline. You can borrow best practices. It's your choice. And I've used nip.io to set up the domain. Now, here you'll see there are multiple deployment strategies available. Um, as you guys know, CI CD best practices say that we should do continuous deployment to production. However, let's be real. Not every company is ready for this. Therefore, what I have chosen here is automatic sta uh, deployment to staging, and then I'll manually deploy to production. All right, so this is all set up, and I am good to go. Now I'm going to go back to my repo. And I'm going to go into the web ID to make the changes that I want to make. So just so you know, this is the page that I have right now. It's boring. It's just hello from GitLab. It doesn't have any of our branding. So I want to fix that. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So here in the ID, now everybody loves their own environment. I'm fully aware of that. I like my sublime text. Do not judge Vim people. Um, but here, it's nice for quick changes to just go to get started. Now, on the left side, I have all my files available. I know that the one I want to change is here under hello, hello controller. Oh, good. I have a to-do message that says personalized. Remember this, because it's going to show up when we do the auto DevOps pipeline. So I'm going to say hello, reinvent love from GitLab. I'm also going to change the background color. The green's not very us. I have a cheat sheet here with the hex code. I don't remember it. Sorry. <laughs> I also want to add a cute Tanuki image, because Tanukis are awesome. So I'm going to do that. Now I've personalized it enough, so I'm going to remove this to-do. And again, as I said, remember this for when we're running the pipeline. 
All right, so this is done. Now I have one unstaged change, and I can hit commit here. It shows me the unstaged changes. Now, this is just one change right now, but when you have a bunch of changes, this can be really helpful because you can pick which one you want to stage. So I'm going to hit stage changes. Now I have this. Now I hit commit. I see the diff here, which is useful. I'm going to do a commit message of make things pretty. And I could commit to master, but I'm actually going to create a new branch and merge request because that's the best practice. I could change the name, but I'm not going to do that right now. So I hit commit. By the way, I'm going quickly because we have a lot to cover. So bear with me. Keep following along. Don't sleep. OK, so make things pretty. The merge request is ready here. Purple and Tanuki. And I can, I'm assigning this to me. I could put labels, and I could set an approver if somebody needs to check my code. Now, if I had code owners, I would actually automatically have an approver set up there. But for now, I don't, but that's an option. Now, I'm also going to take the option to remove source branch when merge request is accepted, because I want to keep things clean. Hit submit request. All right, so now this is my merge request, my MR. And you'll see here the pipeline is kicked off. So clicking on this, I go to the auto DevOps pipeline that we had talked about. As I said, I, request, I set that up in my configuration. So that kicks off right away here. So here it starts with the build. Now, as we all know, uh, it takes some time to run pipelines. So this is the point at which I do a little bit of sleight of hand. And I have an identical project that I have done exactly the same things, but I ran the pipeline in advance. And so here you see it's the same pipeline, but it's already run. So this is the auto DevOps pipeline, which has the build phase where uh, it, it's going to use our uh, Docker build file, to uh, or if that's not present, the Heroku build apps to detect the language of the code and then create an image that's going to be in our container registry. The next is the test st stage, which has a bunch of things in it, including code quality, container scanning, license management, et cetera. I'm going to go into the details of it when I show you the results of this in the merge request. Yes, it's going to be in the merge request. So, and then we'll build the, then it's built the review app, which I think is one of the most beautiful things about GitLab, because what this does here, it creates an ephemeral instance of the live application with the changes that you've made. So you can see what, what's the diff. And you can also share it with other people for feedback, thoughts, et cetera. And this is on the Kubernetes cluster where you um, are going to actually eventually deploy. And the nice thing with that is that gives us dynamic application security testing, because that's only possible when something is live and running. Uh, finally, we'll do some performance checks on site speed and go from there. So let's go back to the merge request, which is where all the answers will be found. So as I said, we had um, this is the pipeline running. And this is the review app that I was just gushing about. So I click here. And look at this. It's purple. It's got Tanuki and Hello reInvent. I am really happy about this, because this is exactly what I wanted this to look like. So that's awesome. Now I go through this merge request, and I see, oh, code quality improved on one point. So remember that I told you that I had removed a to-do, and that was going to uh, show up here? That's this. So it told us that we did something good. Uh, code quality is a qualitative scan, that, a static scan that goes through um, the code that we have to make suggestions or notice good things that we did. Now, here we also see that performance metrics improved on one point and degraded on three. This is through sitespeed.io. So that gives you a sense of what is your change doing for the code, uh, for your uh, user experience. Now, this part is super meaty. Here I have a full report of all the security scanning in one place, reliably available in the MR. So I'm going to click on the, uh, oops, I should have done control, uh, command rather, whatever. To see the full security report, I go here and I look. OK, so I can check right away. OK, there's this problem. I can learn more. Or I, could dismiss, I can dismiss the vulnerability or create an issue to fix this problem. I see that SAS detected this. Now, dependency scanning was fine. So when we looked for any dependencies that might have brought on uh, vulnerabilities, we did not find any. So that's good news. Uh, container scanning, which, is look, which looks at your application containers for any issues, that has a lot. It has 233. And here's the deal. I can look at it all right here. Again, click it for more details, dismiss the vulnerability, or create an issue. You have the options all right in one place. Finally, DAST also looks like it's detected something, and the same deal applies. So this is all of my security uh, issues all coming. I got here through the MR. Now, 
The same thing applies to license management, where I can see a full report of all the open source licenses that are present in my code. And I can make sure whether to, let's say, for example, blacklist a license or approve it. Because what you really want to be aware of is that there's no licenses in here that are against company policy. So for example, some viral OSS license that makes all of your code free. I don't think your boss would be happy with that. Um, and this is all available through the MR. And that is the true beauty of GitLab. All of this information, which we just covered through Auto DevOps, is available in this one MR, which tells you what change was done. Now, here you'll see my colleague, Dan, who helped me build this demo. He had already merged this, because as I said, this is a cake in the oven. Normally, I would have clicked merge right now. But because we clicked merge already, this kicks off a uh, pipeline to push to production, which is um, waiting for manual action. Now, when we go here, you will see that, OK, this is very similar to the pipeline that we just went through, but slightly different. Because we have build test staging, which is what we deployed to previously, but then it can roll out to production. Now, we have various like type that you can roll out 10% more. Uh, as we know, best practice is to slowly roll out. But in the, today, I'm going to just do 100% rollout. So we've seen this, but I'm going to do that rollout from um, the Environments tab. The Environments tab is where all my operational information is available. Um, so here you'll see, OK, this is the prod. Let's check what it looks like. It's still the old one. That's fine, because that's what we expected it to be. Um, review app, we already checked that out. Now we can see the staging one, right? just to make sure that the staging deploy was accurate. All right, here's my beautiful purple one. So all is looking good over here. And this is what I want to push to prod. I just made that decision. So I am going to go into deploy and roll out to 100%. And let's kick that off. Now let's also start praying, because this is all live. <laughs> all right, so let's see here. OK, this got kicked off. That's amazing. So now I am going to go back to the pipelines. And see, this is running live right now. I'm going to click on it so you can see. It's not done yet, because you know it's not instantaneous. It's almost there. I'm going to click on it so you can see that stuff's happening as we speak, right here. Isn't this exciting so much? We started with version control and the code. We made changes. We ran the CI CD pipeline. There was a bit of a cake in the oven there. And then we are now deploying to production. And it looks like it is almost done. Still waiting. That's all good. And once it's done, we're going to see we, we're going to have the app in prod, and we're going to actually check out metrics in production to see what is happening. All right, bear with me here. And the interesting thing is, this is all in the single application. It's deleting canar canaries right now. Do, 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 do. All is going through <sighs> network Wi-Fi in conferences. How many of you are streaming? on your phone right now. Please stop. <laughs> you need to stop doing this. You're ruining my demo. <laughs> See, it's still uploading artifacts, all because of you. <laughs> all right, we keep going. We keep going. Let's wait. Let's see. I'm going to go. At this point, I've waited so long, I feel like I might as well see success over here. What do you guys feel like? Wait it out or go back to the environments page? No thoughts? Who wants to wait it out? Raise your hand. Come on, are you listening? No one's listening to me. Great. <laughs> OK, good. People want to wait it out. OK. All right, let's go. How much time is it? OK, we have a little bit of time remaining. I guess we're going to go mm, back to the environments now. That's what everybody told me to do. So I'm just following instructions at this point. Um, all right, so let's see if this is done yet. Oh, yes, it's in production. I clicked on the production, and it's here. Yay, we did it. Good work. Thank you for stopping the stream. Now that we have seen this, let's check monitoring. So as I said, I had enabled Prometheus when we had set up the utilities in Auto DevOps. What that meant was that out of the box, I'm going to get Prometheus metrics, which are right here and available. Now, what you will see in this is so you see core usage, you see memory usage, et cetera. Uh, however, it doesn't show me yet a deploy. I'm going to just refresh for that real quick. Give me a second. 
OK, well, I'll just tell you. Once that deploy hits, it would show me a deploy link, which would, if there was a spike or a dip that bothered me in this, I could go click on that and correlate metrics changes to code. And that is how you can cut short your mean time to resolution cycle just so much. So that's the metrics that we saw over there. Um, and that is my demo. We went all the way from version control to code changes to finally getting to um, monitoring and metrics. And back to slides, please. And that's my demo. Thank you. Back to slides, please. Cool. Um, thank you, Priyanka, for that demo. Uh, thank you for watching it. And I hope you have questions about GitLab. Our booth is right there, 2608. Uh, we're here for the next hour with uh, an entire crew of technical experts. And we'd love to talk with you. Thank you so much. Thanks nice for your chatting. attention. Have fun.